good morning students welcome back now in today class we are going to discuss the next topic in this chapter sex determination in animals sex determination in animals so what is a sex determination it is a genetic method to distinguish the male and the female in a species it is called a sex determination it is a genetic method to distinguish the male and female in a species it is called a sex determination and how this sex determination is possible in case of animals it is only because of the allosomes allosomes are the reproductive chromosomes allosomes are the reproductive chromosomes which determine the gender of the organism so usually x and y are the allosomes in some of the animals including the humans while in some of the animals right z w are the allosomes so like this x y are the allosomes so they are considered as the reproductive chromosomes which determine the gender of an organism now the x chromosome it was discovered by henke and the y chromosome it was discovered by stevens x chromosome was discovered by henke and the y chromosome it was discovered by stevens and related to z and w we don't have the information this much it is more than enough x chromosome y chromosome are the allosomes z and w are the allosomes allosomes andre you know they are the reproductive chromosomes which determine the gender of an organism Our students there are five different genetic methods are being there which can determine the sex in the animals that is a uh, xx uh, xy method next uh, xx uh, xo method next uh, double z uh, zw method next uh, double z uh, zo method and last one uh, haploid uh, diploid method haploid uh, diploid method so these are the five different uh, genetic methods which we are going to study under this topic now xx xy type xx xo type they falls into male heterogametic condition male heterogametic condition while double z zw double z zo type it will fall into female heterogametic condition now what is a male heterogeneity male heterogeneity andre in this phenomenon in this phenomenon the male produces two types of gametes the male produces two types of gametes with respect to with respect to determination of a sex with respect to determination of sex so once again i repeat the definition students it is a phenomenon in which male produces two types of gametes with respect to the determination of the sex it is called as a male heterogeneity condition 
and uh, in male heterogametic condition two genetic methods will be false xx xy type xx xo type next is a female heterogametic condition female heterogametic andre it is a phenomenon in which uh, female produces two types of uh, gametes with respect to the determination of sex with respect to the determination of the sex the same line will be follows it is called a female heterogametic in female heterogametic double z z w type double z z o type next haploid diploid method it is a special case of genetic method that i will discuss after this a first moving toward the xx xy type now here we have to consider students uh, one good example that is a uh, drosophila melanogaster of chromosomes so the female is this one and the male is this one having six autosomes plus xx condition and six autosomes plus xy condition so these are the possible gametes of them three autosomes plus x three autosomes plus x here three autosomes plus x three autosomes plus y so when the fertilization will be occur among these gametes uh, the zygote having six autosomes plus xx uh, that will be develops into the female and here six autosomes plus xy condition that zygote will be develops into the male okay because male is what heterogametic condition next students uh, will move toward the xx xo type in a xo again it denotes uh, the male heterogametic condition a sperm having the x chromosome another sperm do not have the x chromosome so for this uh, xx xo type the good example is a grasshopper insect grasshopper so it is having a 24 chromosomes 24 chromosomes it is having a xx xo type xx xo type the good example is a grasshopper it is having 24 chromosomes so this is a 22 autosomes plus xx condition 22 autosomes plus x4 condition is of male then you see the gametes 11 autosomes plus x 11 autosomes plus x 11 autosomes plus x 11 autosomes plus o o indicates the deletion of chromosome so when the fertilization is occur 22 autosomes plus xx so that zygote develops into the female and 22 autosomes plus x4 that is zygote develops into the male so that indicates again male heterogametic condition now students uh, will move toward the the female heterogametic condition that is a double z z w type so double z z w type the example is uh, birds and uh, some reptiles bird some reptiles uh, for that i am taking one example that is a uh, chicken the scientific name of this one is uh, gallus uh, gallus uh, domesticus okay female heterogametic condition so double z z w type so here the chromosomes are uh, for female 78 are the chromosomes 
thereby have to take here 76 autosomes plus ZW type and for the male 76 autosomes plus ZZ male, male is homogeneity condition now 76 divided by 2 2 3s are 6 1 2 8s are 16 38 autosomes plus Z 38 autosomes plus W next 38 autosomes plus Z 38 autosomes plus Z 38 autosomes plus Z ok now when the fertilization is done among these 76 autosomes plus ZZ 76 autosomes plus ZW so this zygote develops into female and this zygote develops into the male so this is a female heterogametic condition that is a double ZZW type now one more genetic method is there in female heterogametic condition that is a double Z Z O type. So double Z Z O type example is a butterfly. Butterfly. So butterfly is having a how many chromosomes? 380 chromosomes. So thereby first indicate a female. Next indicate male. So 380 means 378 autosomes plus ZO because female heterogametic and 378 autosomes plus ZZ male is homogeneity thereby 378 divided by 2 2 ones are 2 eights are 16 2 nines are 189 autosomes plus Z will become one gamete and 189 autosomes plus O will become another gamete that is female gamete here also 189 autosomes plus Z 189 autosomes plus Z now when the fertilization is been done 378 autosomes plus ZZ so this zygote develops into male because male is homogeneity condition now this one when the fertilization is occurred 378 autosomes plus ZO so this zygote develops into the female because female is a heterogeneity condition thereby students male heterogeneity means the male is able to produce two type of male gametes with respect to the determination of sex XX XY type XX XO type female heterogeneity means the female able to produce uh, the two types of gametes uh, with respect to the determination of the sex XX XY type a good example is uh, drosophila and man also that I will take separately and XX XO type a good example is a grasshopper and a double Z ZW type its good example is birds and some reptiles so take example chicken and a double Z ZO type its best example is a butterfly okay now students will move toward the haploid diploidy method
Now next, uh, haploidy diploidy method. Haploid diploidy method. So what is the meaning of this one? It is a genetic method in which the male is a haploid and the females are deployed. It is a genetic method or it is a phenomenon in which males are haploid, the females are deployed. Such method is haploid deployed method. So the good example for this one is uh, ants, wasp and uh, bees. Ant, wasp, bees. Now I am here taking an example of the bees. That is uh, the social bee, honey bee. So what is the scientific name of honey bee? That is a uh, apis. Uh, Indica. It is a Indian bee scientific name. Now students, uh, majority of you see the honey bee and you have been experienced a little bit practically also. How the honey bee looks, how it will bites, etc. Now when we see the cast of this colony of honey bee, it is having uh, three different castes. Number one, drones. Number two, queen. Number three, worker, bee. So these are the three different castes. Drones, they are males. They are haploid. They are males, they are haploid. They are fertile. And they are raised by parthenogenesis. So these are the characteristics of the drones. They are males, they are haploid, they are fertile, they are raised by the parthenogenesis. What is parthenogenesis? The development of the organism from the egg without fertilization. Next queen. Queens are females. They are deployed. Again they are fertile. And they are raised after fertilization. That is by the formation of the zygote. From the zygote they are being developed. Next worker bees. Worker bees. They are diploid. They are sterile. They are sterile. They also raised by the fertilization means after formation of the zygote from the zygote they will be gets developed so thereby drones are males they are haploid queens are diploids worker bees also diploids but they are sterile the worker bee name it indicates it will only work for the colony their function is to visit the flowers to collect the nectar and it will modify the secretion and it will deposit in the form of honey in beehives. Now, how the genetic method will be there of this uh, honey bee, that is haploid diploidy method. See, the males having a 16 chromosome, the female, that is queen, having a 32 chromosome. Now the gamete, so the gamete, is having 16 chromosome again because it will be raised mitotically it will be raised gametes are being raised mitotically and in case of the female that is queen the gametes are being raised by the meiosis cell division thereby here 16 chromosomes here 16 chromosomes means two eggs are being formed of having 16 chromosomes here one sperm will be formed having 16 chromosomes. The sperm is being raised by a mitosis 
and the eggs are been raised by the meiosis. Now, when the fertilization is been occurred, here the zygote will be formed of having the 32 chromosome. So this will be develops into queen or a worker bee. Queen or worker bee. And here one egg will be left out by the parthenogenesis. By the parthenogenesis, it will develops into drone having 16 chromosome that is haploid in creation. Hence I can say the drones are being raised by the parthenogenesis. Means there is no fertilization from the egg. The drones are being raised without fertilization by the mitotic division. Now further the drones will have the mother but they do not have the father. The drones will have the mother but they do not have the father but the drones will have the grandfather. So this is about the, the haploid diploidy method. Okay students. Pedigree. The next topic is pedigree. So what is pedigree? It is a method to analyze the trait or character present in several generations of a family. It is called pedigree. So what is pedigree? It is a method to analyze the trait or the character which is present in several generations of a family. Andre, when the family in a lay, whatever may be the number of generations, how the character is getting expressed whether the character is expressing in terms of the dominant or in terms of the recessive. If it is expressing in the recessive, in what way the disorder is appearing. So such information will come by the pedigree. Now how this pedigree is being represented? The pedigree is represented in the form of symbols. That is with the help of these symbols, they are going to prepare a chart and by that chart, they will come to know in that family whether generations together or they are been suffering with any type of gene related disorder or not. Now what is the importance of the pedigree? What is the importance of the pedigree? See, pedigree importance is, it is utilized, it is utilized to trace the inheritance of the trait present in several generations of particular family. So it is called uh, the importance of the pedigree. So what is the importance of the pedigree? It is used to trace uh, the inheritance of that particular character that how it is found in the several generations of any family. Now how the pedigree is represented that we have to know. I told you the pedigree is represented in the form of symbols and all those symbols collectively will be in the form of what a chart. Now the spherical symbol indicates a female. The square symbol indicates a 
male. Half circle with the shade means a circle with shade. The circle with shade will indicate a heterozygous female. Circle with half shade indicates a heterozygous female. Square half shade this indicates a heterozygous male. Now this shape that is rhomboidal shape indicates a unspecified sex. Unspecified sex. Now the same shape indicating any number like 5 or 4 etc. indicates uh, the number of half springs. So here it is uh, 5. 5 half springs are produced for the parents. Now spherical shape dragging one line like this keeping the square box it indicates uh, the mating between individuals of having the opposite gender mating between individuals of having opposite gender this is female and this is male next uh, spherical shape dragging double lines again keeping the square box mating between relatives mating between relatives now circle dragging line square box the parents having a two daughters the parents having two daughters now further this symbol indicates triangle symbol indicates spontaneous abortion spontaneous abortion okay now this symbol indicates monozygotic twins monozygotic twins now further one more symbol This symbol indicates dizygotic twins. Dizygotic twins. So all these are what are the different type of symbols. Now one more symbol is there. Keeping a circle like this. And at the center a dark spherical dot. It indicates a X linked carrier. X linked carrier. Square box dot symbol. It indicates a Y linked carrier. So, dear students, all these are what? The symbols of the pedigree. So, by Representing the symbols, one can draw the chart of the pedigree. Now, for our syllabus, we have two examples. One is a myotonic dystrophy. Another one is a sickle cell anemia. Now, we are going to study the two different examples related to the pedigree charts. One is a
myotonic dystrophy it is a autosomal dominant gene related disorder it follow vertical pattern of inheritance and further the character of this one never skips the generation never skips the generation andre father gidre son ig barodu again the son when becomes the father to his son again the chances of a myotonic dystrophy will be there if the parent is a heterozygous condition 50% of the half springs find with the myotonic dystrophy if the parent is a heterozygous condition then 50% of the half springs they found with the myotonic dystrophy if uh, the parent is a homozygous condition homozygous condition then all half springs all half springs uh, suffer with myotonic uh, dystrophy all of springs they are suffer with the myotonic dystrophy now next uh, sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia it is a uh, autosomal recessive gene related disorder it is autosomal recessive gene related disorder now this will be occur because of the point mutation because of the point mutation now sickle cell anemia will only express will only express at a homozygous condition will only express at homozygous condition okay so sickle cell anemia only express at homozygous condition and uh, both both half springs either it may be male or it may be female both half springs will be affected and this also never skips the generation so this is all about what the pedigree the importance of the pedigree and the two types of gene related disorder are relating toward the chart or the map please refer the textbook